Thank you, Chair Cantwell. Next, I'll recognize Senator Raphael Warnock for five minutes for questions. Senator. Thank, thank you very uh, thank you very much. Um, as I talk to Georgians, uh, especially from those in the communities of color, uh, they are excited uh, to get a vaccine, especially after uh, they've seen that their friends and neighbors are safe after receiving the vaccine, and they are saying that they want these shots in their arms. The problem I hear over and over again is not a vaccine hesitancy, but a vaccine access. Um, could I have one of the uh, panelists speak to the barriers? Uh, what barriers do uh, uh, people of color face in getting vaccinated? And what steps should Congress take to ensure that these communities can access vaccines equitably? Senator, I'd be happy to start. Thank you. Yes, thank you for the question. I think the barriers that are faced really relate to vaccine providers in neighborhoods of communities of color. So we have to look and see, do we have the Walgreens or the CVS, um, federally qualified healthcare centers? Do we have doses at um, the actual offices, doctor's offices for those communities? So it's really a, make, a matter of making sure geographically that as a state gets doses of vaccine, that they distribute those doses and they reach areas of communities of color. And one of the things we're doing here in New Mexico is we're looking at our social vulnerability index. And where we have a high social vulnerability, we're ensuring that we're pushing doses to those areas to reach those communities. Thank you. Hi, Senator, I would like to add to what was just stated by Dr. Collins. So another thing is that it's really important that we have clear communication about where to get the vaccine and specific rollout plans by state, by local areas. So audiences know exactly where things stand in their, in their community. Um, in addition to that, continuing to address issues like transport, access to transportation, childcare, really understanding what those structural barriers are locally and addressing those while also promoting a message um, ab about the vaccine, its efficacy and safety. And I, I would simply add, Senator, and I'm sure in your campaign, you were in many broadcast stations, radio and television, as I have been and have been since. And in every, uh, before every broadcast, uh, there's a huddle of editors, of anchors, of reporters, digging for the information that you're asking for to get it to your constituents. They're hungry to have that information. They're anxious to report it. So I don't think it's a lack of will. It's just uh, we need the information from government. We'll get it to the people. So what role do you think trusted partners play in this? Um, I mean, there's the issue of access. You know, I've come from the faith community. And I know that churches, for example, have stepped up. My own church is, is, is a site for vaccinations. Do, do you see this as a critical part of, of our approach? Senator, uh, I am, um, in, a, in a pro bono sense, I, I serve in one of the senior councils um, of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So I am very appreciative of the fact that the faith communities have a role to play here and can have great influence encouraging people to uh, get vaccinated. And so I know my own denomination is doing that. I, know, I believe yours is as well. And I think that is very commendable. And, uh, and, and ministers can, can help swat away these uh, falsehoods that may be circulating on the internet because they are also very trusted um, public figures among our, our constituents. Absolutely. I would like to echo that. And I would also like to say that having people on the ground that already have trust within communities is instrumental because a lot of individuals are going to go to those people to access information. I've seen that in my work within the Latino community. I know that there are a lot of Latinos in Georgia. I used to work in Florida directly with Latinos in Tampa. And 
community leaders were instrumental in getting the message out about cancer screenings, about cancer services, about education. So in this moment where there is so much mistrust, leveraging and, and establishing those um, contacts with faith-based organizations, grassroots organizations that are already trusted is going to be instrumental in vaccine rollout. And I just want to say that I agree with the panelists and I don't want to restate what they've already stated, but I do know it's critical to work with our faith-based faith partners, our leaders, and we have a Trusted Voices campaign in New Mexico in which we are engaging those who've been vaccinated, who represent communities of color, to be examples of the value of this vaccine. Thank you all so much for your work and for your insights.